This calligraphy clip is about spacing. When you've practiced your letters, you'll want to very soon put them together into words. Spacing is very important in calligraphy. David Kindersley, the great letter cutter, used to say that a bad space is worse than a bad letter. Start with words that have straight sides, like this letter mint here. What you're aiming for is that the space between each individual stroke, and I'm talking about this as the space, looks about the same as the space between the letters. So between there and there looks about the same as there and there, between there and there looks about the same as there and there, and so on. You'll see that I've drawn in pencil a series of little vertical lines through the middle of each of these strokes, and they should look about the same. So if I'm going to be writing the letter N, where should I start for the letter U? Well, I'm trying to make sure that the space between there and there looks about the same as the space between there and there and there and there to get a lovely evenness of texture. Then start to introduce letters that have round strokes and letters that have diagonal strokes. So for the letter O, you need to position it slightly closer to the straight stroke. You'll see if you just look at that bit, it doesn't look the same as that bit, but you have all this white space here and here that you need to take account of. And so when we write our next letter, that is actually closer together. That space is closer than that space and that space, but it looks about the same. And it's the same as with diagonal letters. If you think about it as a sort of spatial area, that you've got all that white space here. And so that needs to be allowed for in that circumstance. So rounded letters and diagonal letters generally are placed slightly closer together. When it comes to the spacing between words, you should leave the space of a letter O. So if I just do that with the corner of the nib of that alphabet between the words. I'm writing these rather quickly so that the clip isn't too long and they're not the best letters. So if I'm writing italic, then again, with a narrow letter O, it's the space, oh, that was rather silly. Right, let's do that again. And just to not make a complete muck up this time, you'll see that the spaces between the words for italic are slightly closer together. Now, spacing between lines, you need to allow for the descenders, the bits that go down on one line, not to clash with the ascenders, the bits that go up on the previous line. So if I write the word, and again, I'm writing this quite quickly, so my letter forms are not fantastic, and I will say that that is my excuse. And straight under that comes the word hill. I need to ensure that the first stroke of the letter H and those L's don't clash. So generally speaking, between lines, you should leave the amount of the ascenders. So in this case of foundation or round hand, that's three nib widths. Leave an extra nib width just in case the two letters come exactly one under the other. And again, the space for the ascenders. So that's three, four, five, six, seven. So the space between the lines should be equivalent to about seven nib widths. I've got calligraphy clips spacing two where this is explained perhaps a little bit more clearly. 
Now, when you're writing things out, it's often difficult to think of what to write. And so these are some pangrams which I got from the internet. And all they are are sentences which have all the letters of the alphabet in them. So we know the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but you might not know that big Fuji waves pitch enzymed kex liquor, for example, or five big quacking zephyrs jolt my wax bed. These have all the letters of the alphabet in them. You can look them up yourself on the internet or I'm just freezing the frame here so that you can um, stop your computer and it will save you having to do that. <laughs> 